And when a man or woman has discipline and structure, and they are highly disciplined and structured, they are predisposed to winning. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey friends, welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. My name is Bedros Coolian, and I've got an awesome episode teed up for you today. In fact, the episode that is teed up for you is about how to be a winner. And the reason I say it's how to be a winner is because I found a pattern in winners and I realized that it is not genetic. It is not something that's inherently gifted to them. It is a quote unquote muscle habits traits that they have developed, trained over time. And the reason I developed this uh, episode and, and really wanted to structure it out for you is because most of you know that I have the Legacy Tribe coaching program. In Legacy Tribe coaching program, we've got hundreds of members in it who are looking to level up in their business, in their personal development, and just become the best 2.0 versions of themselves, right? And the reason I created the Legacy Tribe is because, you know, not everyone could afford my $100,000 a year coaching program, the domination year. And so I figured, well, for $297 a month, which is about nine or 10 bucks a day, I'll have the Legacy Tribe, which is live trainings every week with Q and A's that everyone could ask. And so a question I had gotten was, hey, Bedros, how do I become a top achiever? Like, how do I become someone who's a high performer? How do I become someone who was almost like guaranteed to win? And I was like, that's funny you say that because winners do have traits and habits. And this person was asking me that question in a way where they were implying that winners are almost born. You're born a high achiever, you're born a peak performer, you're born a winner. And yeah, there might be some people that are maybe born talented, but I wouldn't say that there's anyone who's born a winner. You are developed into a winner. Truth is most of society, they're losers. They give up early, they have an external locus of control, which means they believe that outside influences control their outcome. They don't have an internal locus of control. Uh, that allows them to say, I am responsible for my outcome. And so they're victim minded. They have an external locus of control. They give up too early and they underestimate how easy it will be and how short it will take. And so when it doesn't meet their expectations, they quit and therefore reinforce being a loser, right? And so winners are just the opposite. And you know, I've got the good fortune to be surrounded by winners, right? Not only my team here at HQ, but many of the coaching clients that I have. Fuck, truth be told, all the coaching clients that I have. Some are Navy SEALs, some are high level doctors, some are professional um, athletes, you know, some are Mr. Olympia champions, some are billionaires, and they are across many different industries from real estate to nutrition to fitness, to supplements, to apparel. And I noticed that no matter the industry they come from, no matter the gender, no matter their background, like I'm an immigrant, I'm a foreigner. I never went to college. I'm a winner. I developed the traits and habits of a winner. Doesn't matter if they're male, female, an immigrant or born here, if they grew up white collar, blue collar, if they went to college or not like me, there is a formula for being a winner. And it is not something that you're born with. And that is something I wanna stress to you because you think that the winners that you follow on social media who seem to always win, just have like a rabbit's foot stuck up their ass. They don't. What they have done is they have slowly killed off the habits and traits that made them losers. And they started to develop the habits and traits that make them winners. And I'm going to share those habits and traits with you. Habit and trait number one is that winners are goal focused. They have an outcome they want and they are focused on getting that outcome. And that outcome is very specific. It's not general like one day I want to be rich, right? That is what a loser says. See, a loser thinks in generalities. Winners think in specificities. And so a winner says, I wanna make $10 million by this date by doing this. So they set a very specific goal. 
and they say when they want it by, and they know how they're going to achieve it. Now, they may not know all the different levels of adversity they're going to face. Uh, it might take them a longer or shorter amount of time than the five or 10 years. They don't set some unrealistic thing like, I'm going to be really rich one day soon. Uh, okay, genius, really rich one day soon. What does that mean, right? See, I believe that when you are general like that, and you put it out into the universe, the universe is like, dude, that's such a general fucking goal. Like, I can't even help you get there. But if you're like, I wanna make $10 million within the next five years in this industry, then now you are a goal-focused individual. Number two is winners become very competitive. See, the reality is that most of our parents have made us into losers by forcing us to be non-competitive because it is scary to be competitive. There's a chance of losing. Of course there's a chance of losing. So if your parents weren't competitive, they're gonna teach you how to be non-competitive as well. They're gonna teach you how to be docile. They're gonna teach you to settle for mediocrity, that average is okay. And we know by listening to the show that average is not okay. Average is the enemy. And so the losers of life are okay with being non-competitive. But winners are very competitive. They develop a competitive muscle. They want to measure themselves against people in their industry. They want to measure themselves both in physique, in mindset, in money, in the quality and health of their relationship. See, you can't be a winner in one category and not have it spill over into other categories. You can, but typically you're not going to find that person. When someone's a winner in one category and they figured out how to be a winner there, they're able to replicate that in other categories of life as well. Same goes for being a loser. If you are non-competitive in your money, then you're probably non-competitive in your health and fitness. You're like, ah, eh, I got man boobs. That's okay. I got a dad bod. That's acceptable. All my friends look like me. Why should I compete to look better than them, right? My relationship is okay. Why should I try and make it any better? It takes too much effort. I make average money. Why should I compete to try and make the most in my company? Whereas winners are always competitive. They're very competitive. Hey guys, quick interruption to the Bedros Coolian Show. I want to remind you about the Trulian Wellness Shot. I created the Trulian Wellness Shot because I wanted a product that was going to help you boost your immune system and fight off inflammation in your gut, in your joints, in your body so that you are healthy, you don't get sick, and you live an awesome life. Trulian Wellness Shots have these nine ingredients that are going to absolutely help fight off inflammation and boost your immune system. Vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, ginger, turmeric, echinacea, B12, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. And every single packet is checked for heavy metals because our ingredients are top quality and we use nothing but top quality because we cut no corners. So you can use my name, Bedros, at truline.com and get 50% off your Truline Tribe subscription. You not only get 50% off your first order, you also get free shipping. You get a 30 day unconditional money back guarantee so that if you don't like the product for some reason, which we have yet to meet anyone who don't like the product, we will give you your money back, no questions asked, and we will shake hands and part ways as friends. And of course, $1 of every order goes to Shriner Children's Hospital, which is a hospital system that I've been helping and supporting for over 12 years. They provide medical procedures, medical services, surgeries to children whose families can't afford these procedures. So go to truling.com, use code word Bedros, join the Truling tribe you get 50 percent off your first order and then 20 percent off your recurring monthly orders after that back to the show trait number three for the highest performers of becoming winners they are highly disciplined and structured every winner that i found across every industry sports business relationship health fitness these are massively disciplined people they are structured for example i've got a coaching client uh, i won't say who he is but he runs a he runs a company that makes $1.2 billion. And he's like, dude, I don't just walk into the gym and go, all right, what body part should I train? Like, he plans it out. Like, this guy runs a massive, massive construction business, $1.2 billion in sales. Yet his gym routine is perfectly structured. He eats differently before training legs because they're bigger muscle groups. 
right? And you would be like, man, I think just going to the gym for 30, 40 minutes and you know doing a circuit is fine. Eh, maybe for you, but for someone who is goal focused, who is very competitive and highly disciplined and structured, he wants to go in there with a mission plan. That's exactly what I do. I don't just fly by the seat of my, my pants when I go into the gym. I have a structured program that I'm gonna follow on this date and based on what that program is, the way I eat the night before and the morning of is very different. If I'm training shoulders, buys or tries, I'm probably not eating a ton of carbs in the morning for me personally. But if I'm gonna train back or legs, dude, I'm carb loading the night before and the morning of because I want sustained energy because I'm bringing the ruckus in the gym, right? My programming is pre-developed. It is discipline and structure in my schedule for the day. I don't just go, who should I call and what meeting should I take? Everything has been structured and put together on my calendar in a disciplined fashion. What I mean by that, it is batch processed. All of my calls happen at a certain time window. All of my meetings will happen at a certain time window. All of my recording sessions for this podcast, for this show, will happen at a certain time window. This way, I have structure and consistency. And when a man or woman has discipline and structure, and they are highly disciplined and structured, they are predisposed to winning. Number four, they have singularity of focus. You show me someone who's a loser, and I will show you someone who's got a million ideas and they're all half-baked, half-attempted, no real results or progress to show, just off a whim, they got motivated or inspired and they launched something or took on a training program or started a new diet, but didn't really have singularity of focus to stick with it. You show me someone who's a winner, I will show you a person who was absolutely locked on, singularity of focus. And I'll give you a great example. You know, I know all of you guys love and use Trulene Wellness Shots, right? Our Trulene Wellness Shots supplement company has been blowing up the last four years since we created it. Now, what you don't know is I've been wanting to create Trulene supplements for the last seven years. But we created Trulene four years ago because I told myself that I won't allow myself to create another company until I have at least 500 Fit Body Bootcamp locations. I had singularity of focus on that one mission at hand, which was to create 500 Fit Body Bootcamp locations. And when I do, I then gave myself permission to hire a leader, build a team, and create truly supplements. That is singularity of focus. The winners, top achievers, High performers of life have massive singularity of focus. Habit number five that you can develop is impulse control, right? Think how often you impulsively get sidetracked and lose sight of the main thing. You think you ought to make the main thing the main thing, but then you get a notification from social media or you wonder how your buddies are doing, so you decide to pick up the phone and check in, or you decide that, you know what, I'm gonna go to the fridge and see what I can eat when it's not even time to eat. Like, I structure my eating schedule so that I don't impulsively go, ah, I'm hungry, let me go eat. If I decided to eat every time I'm hungry, I'd be a fat fuck again. That's the reality. If I have X number of macros that I need to get, in a 24 hour period, and this is my eating window, whatever, a 10, 11, 12 hour day, I know exactly what I'm eating to get to my macros and my caloric needs. Therefore, I'm not gonna impulsively go to the fridge or cupboard because I'm hungry. Because when you are doing deep work, friends, when you are doing work that will produce a winner, it is hard when you're working on a business when you're trying to build a brand, you're trying to launch a podcast or a show, that is difficult work. And therefore, you want to impulsively check in on social media, reach out to a friend, hit a stopping point and go to the cupboard, the pantry or the, or the kitchen, delay the inevitable. All of those impulses 
are things that you ought to control because that's what a winner does. Number six, to have priority in terms of your time management. Prioritize things. It is surprising and shocking to me that people who want to win in business, in life, in, in, in anything, a sport, who don't prioritize the things that matter. Like, I know that I want to work out at 9 a.m. every morning. And the reason I want to work out at 9 a.m. in the morning is because that is when I'm strongest. Between 9 and 11 a.m., that is when I'm strongest. That is when I have the most amount of energy to push through workout. At 49 years old, I want to stay as physically young and strong and mobile and flexible as possible. So if I'm working out at night, which I do, that is not my primary workout where I'm pushing a lot of weight, where the risk of injury is higher. Because if I use the same amount of weight and intensity like I do in my mornings in my evening workouts, I'm guaranteed to get an injury because I'm not as focused. I'm not as strong. I don't have as much energy by the end of a long work day. In the evenings when I work out with my son or when I'm doing jujitsu and rolling, it is more of a high intensity cardiovascular mobility based training program. For me, my priority is to stay young as possible, as strong as possible, injury free as possible. And that means the priority has to be managed. And so my training is first thing in the morning, 9 a.m. If I go too early, in other words, when I wake up at 5.30 in the morning, again, I increase the rate of injury because I'm going to be careless. I'm not going to be as strong. I'm not going to have as much focus. I know what my magic window is. Winners manage their priorities. And so I make sure that I get my work done in the morning, right? My priorities are to work on things that create money and meaning. I wake up, I work on the things that create money and meaning. By 9 a.m., I'm headed to my gym to get my workout in. That's when I'm strongest. That's when I can bring the ruckus. And then I'll go to the park and get my three miles of walking in. And then I'll make it to HQ by 1130 or 12, and I'm ready to serve my team and serve my clients. My evening workouts, while a priority, are not going to be intense. I'm not going to bring the ruckus because there's a high probability of injury for me. Prioritize the things that matter is what winners do. And finally, number seven, all winners, I found, whether they are in business in a relationship, because look, winning happens, success happens in every industry, right? Like there's people that are just winning in their marriage. There's people that are winning in business. And when I, there's people that are winning in sports as athletes, right? But I found that all winners are athlete minded. They are, they just treat themselves like high performing athletes. Like I don't drink because my sport is entrepreneurism. Because my sport is entrepreneurism, I can't drink. I don't want to wake up and be foggy headed. I don't want to wake up and be bloated and swollen. I want to be clear headed so I can think and process and make decisions that make millions of dollars, right? And I have to make decisions for my coaching clients who are making millions of dollars. So I don't drink. I don't stay out and party. By 10 o'clock, I'm in bed. By 5.30 in the morning, I wake up. I don't surround myself with negativity. I control the thoughts that occupy my mind and the people that I surround myself with. There's no negative thoughts or negative people that are influencing me. I treat myself like an athlete. The way I eat, the what level I hydrate myself, my sleeping. Just because you're not taking the field to play a sport does not mean you can't be athlete-minded. Winners are athlete-minded. They realize that the better condition that they're in the higher the probability of winning in their sport, whether it's a sport of relationship, the sport of entrepreneurship, the sport of just self-development, or the sport of life. If you're better conditioned physically, mentally, you are more likely to win. If you are not better conditioned, then at the first sign of stress, at the first sign of something going wrong, all the cards are gonna fall and you're gonna give up. And so guys, those are the seven things that I found as a consistent factor in all winners. One, they're goal and outcome focused. Two, 
very competitive in the way they attack everything. Number three, highly disciplined and structured. Number four, they have singularity of focus. Number five, massive impulse control. Number six, they manage their priorities. Number seven, they are athlete-minded. And I want to stress to you, these winners, high performers, high achievers, are not born, are not born. Yeah, some might be born with a little more discipline. Some might be born with a little more leadership skills. But most of them are born just like you and me. What they've done is they have developed these habits and traits in their life, just like you would develop your body by training hard and working out and eating right. And they have killed the habits of losers, right? The habit of sleeping in, the habit of losing focus, the habit of settling for mediocrity. And so take on more of these winning habits and you will find yourself winning more in life. Guys, thank you for watching and listening to the Bedros Koolian Show. Remember that the Bedros Koolian Live takes place in Scottsdale, Arizona on September 13th and 14th. We're going to have over a thousand of you coming out to Scottsdale, Arizona. It is going to be the live event of all live events. There's going to be speakers talking about mindset, personal development, making money, becoming the 2.0 self. And it is an opportunity to network with other like-minded people. If you're like, man, I don't know where to find other people like me. You want to come to Bedros Koolian Live September 13th, 14th. The link is going to be in the description box on YouTube and across Spotify and iTunes, or just go to bedroscooling.com and you will find the link to come to Bedros Cooling Live. And remember this, that average is the enemy, that success is your responsibility and change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. I'll see you next time.